Hello everybody and welcome to Nanny Tumble's Storytime Channel. Today we are going to read a story from Nanny Tumble's Storytime book called Monster Seaweed Attack. Okay, are you all ready? And I shall begin. Monster Seaweed Attack. Betty and Bertie were elated. Yahoo! It was the summer holidays and they were off for four whole weeks to Ireland. Their granny was Irish and she had a little cottage in a village near the southern coast of Ireland and that's where they were going to stay. It was going to be a long journey and they would be travelling part of the journey by car and part by ferry. Betty loved standing on the deck of the ferry, looking far out across the Irish Sea, relishing the forceful wind blowing wildly at her hair and listening to the gentle hum of the ferry's engine as the ferry swept up and down in rhythm with the current of the sea. Bertie wasn't such a fan. He was rather prone to seasickness and usually sat huddled up on a comfy chair in the ferry's small cafe. Mum always sat with him, brown paper bag in hand, catch the sick, you know. Yuck! On their journey, Mum always kept sucky sweets in the car's glove compartment. They were so yummy! All different flavours and they lasted for ages. Betty loved the lemon ones, but Bertie's favourite was black currant. Mum always set them a competition to see who could suck their sweet the longest without crunching. Betty was sure Mum's agenda was to keep the children quiet in the car. She really had to concentrate when driving and their constant chattering disturbed her. When they finally arrived in the village, Granny was at the door with a welcoming smile and gave everyone a huge hug. After helping Mum unload the car and settling into their bedrooms, Granny called out, I've some fresh scones with cream and jam waiting for some hungry children. Betty and Bertie raced to the kitchen and tucked in. Yum, yum. The next day, everyone packed their swimming kit and headed off to the beach. They had to walk very carefully along a rather treacherous path at the top of the cliffs. There were lots of wooden gates and styles to climb over. Granny was very fit for her age. Sometimes they had to leave the path and veer across farmers' fields. This was the bit Betty and Bertie loathed. Huge, fresh and smelly cow pats. You didn't want to step into one of those in your flip-flops. On their way, they passed lots of rocky coves where the sea splashed 
dangerously against the rocks. And once they had passed the last cove, called mermaids. Although it is claimed no one ever saw a mermaid. They knew that the stepped path down to the beach wasn't too far. As soon as Betty and Bertie had wriggled into their swimwear with Mummy and Granny holding towels to protect their privacy, they raced each other to the sea, wading as far out as they could before their feet no longer touched the sand below. Bertie was a great swimmer and really fast at the front crawl. Betty wasn't so confident, intended to just swim around in circles during the breaststroke. As Mum shouted, Picnic time! The children swam back to shore and sat on the picnic rug with their towels wrapped around their shoulders. After shivering for a few minutes, the strong afternoon sun soon warmed them. After lunch, Mum and Granny lounged on the sand, chatting about this and that. while Betty and Bertie played throw and catch with the beach ball. The children were having such fun and were so engrossed in their game that they didn't notice Granny creeping stealthily towards them. The scary seaweed monster is coming to get you, cackled Granny as she began to tickle the seaweed around Betty's ankles. Betty screeched and was frozen to the spot from fright. When she had recovered, she started running quickly. The seaweed had felt slimy and tickly and Granny was following as fast as she could behind wielding the long stem with spaghetti-like arms and legs swirling around. It made Betty imagine a huge, creepy daddy long legs that was wrapping itself around her legs. Well, obviously, you don't get daddy long legs that big. Then, Granny began to run after Bertie, who was laughing so much, teasing and whooping. You'll never catch me, Granny! And so the game continued, with the children finding their own seaweed along the beach and chasing around, trying to slither the seaweed against Granny's legs. Soon, they all felt exhausted and went to relax alongside Mum on the beach towels. Later, as the children packed their swimming kit into their bags, Betty snuck some seaweed into her towel and wrapped it up so no one would notice, even though it felt disgusting to touch. Ugh. That night, while Granny, Mum and Bertie were sitting in the lounge watching TV, Betty crept behind the sofa and all of a sudden leapt up and cried, The scary seaweed monster is coming to get you! As she tickled the, the, tickled the, sweet, the seaweed against the back of Granny's neck. Granny got such a fright that she could feel her heart pumping very fast and she felt a little light-headed. Then she had to lie down for a while. 
Betty realised that she had taken the joke too far and apologised to Granny while making her comfy on the sofa. Meanwhile, Mum took the seaweed and placed it carefully in the garden, out of fright's way. Then she and Bertie made some popcorn. Granny had now recovered, you'll be glad to hear, so everyone popcorn crunched their way through a movie. A comedy, not a scary film about monster seaweed. And that's the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed it. It was quite fun, although there were a few little scary bits. So, there's probably some vocabulary or big words in that story that you might not know what they mean. But if you can remember them, try and look them up in a dictionary or you can always Google them. And maybe in some of my next stories, I'll stop each time we have a big complicated word and I'll explain it to you as we go along. And don't forget when you're not sure about a word, if it's spelling, sound it out with all the phonics you've learnt at school and I'm sure you'll be really close to the exact word. Now there's one little thing we have to take away from today's story and that is about when you give people a fright. It's not always a wise thing to do. Some people will have horrible nightmare, nightmares for a long time after a fright. Or other people, a bit like Granny in the story, may be a little bit fragile and if she gets a sudden fright, it's not good for her heart. So don't forget, if you're going to play a trick on somebody and it doesn't matter what age they are or who they are, think very carefully before you play a trick on them or give them a fright. That's it, Kitty Winks. Bye for now. A Kitty Wink and a Lucky Life Wink to you all. Have fun at home, have fun at school, and I hope to be telling you another story soon. Bye for now. <laughs>